I'm Peter Blanc at TCT 2018. And as you know, I'm an interventionalist, and one of the questions that has bugged us since almost the beginning of stenting is whether or not you need to have some kind of polymer on the stent or not. With me is Peter Steller from Utrecht in the Netherlands, and he has a trial which has given us a lot more information about that. So Peter, tell me about the trial first. Uh, Recreate is the name of it. What was the trial about? So the trial was basically to assess the safety and efficacy of a new polymer-free DS compared to a latest, well-known, uh, second-generation Zotronomous Auto 2 stent, as we know as the Resolute from Metronic. Okay, we've had other polymer-free stents before, yeah. have we not? Yes, correct. And so, what do those data show? Just very quickly. I think you know, the, the, the other data is, is very limited. It's just one stand, one stand platform, and it's in a, in a subspecialty of a patient population, high bleeding risk. Good. So on all comers, we have nothing, basically, okay. so far. So this is a relatively new trial. Do we need polymer or not? Tell me how it was set up, and then we'll get to the answer. So this was a physician-initiated, non-sponsored, non-industry-involved study, randomized control, three, three centers in the Europe, um, 1,500 patients included, and the randomization was one-on-one, -on -one, but also looking at uh, troponin status, uh, where troponin-negative patients were randomized to one month of DAPT. Okay, so the troponin did have some, uh, how acute the patients yes, were, exactly. had some bearing on this. Yes. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. What did you find? So basically, to, to cut to the chase, we, we found no significant differences uh, between both stands. Um, that's the bottom line of all. So no differences in target lesion failure, no difference in stent thrombosis, no differences in short DAPT, no difference in the diabetic arm. So very similar results overall. Okay, so what does this tell us? I mean, in the long run, uh, one of the questions is gonna be, okay, so what? So, but I think this is important information, don't you? I think, I think it, it tells us that maybe the polymers that we were very scared of um, almost 12 years ago, 2005, 2006, have undergone a development and an evolution that maybe makes them very suitable now in the long run uh, treating our patients. So um, being scared of a polymer is maybe not a good, uh, a good thought and uh, maybe the polymer really helps even in protecting uh, the patients yeah. and, and the lesions at least. Well, at least we know that there's no difference between the polymer and the polymer free, don't in we? In this study, yeah. at least, yes. Okay, so let me just ask you a sort of a very practical question. Uh, I hope you don't, but here you have a, an LAD lesion and I have to put a stent in it. What are you going to ask me to put in? Polymer free or polymer, or don't you care? I think it depends, in, in, it depends on several aspects. It depends on if you are high bleeding risk, yes or no? Um, because I still, I still think, so we have two devices now where we can, we can prove that a short DPT is at least not dangerous according for stent thrombosis. Target lesion failure might be higher in the end, but if you're scared about stent thrombosis, we have at least two devices where you can stop it after one month. So it depends on that. It depends on if you are diabetic, yes or no. It depends on if you have a long lesion, yes or no. It depends if you have bifurcation lesion there, yes or no. So if it's a simple type A proximal LED, I would put a well-known DES in there. There you have it. Thank you.